to the 52nd annual commencement at Penn State Hazleton. At this time, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices. Now, please take your places and stand as we are about to begin the processional. Good evening. Please be seated. My name is Barbara Brazen, Associate Teaching Professor of Information Sciences and Technology. I am the President of the Penn State Hazleton Faculty Senate, and I am the Faculty Marshal for this ceremony. It is my pleasure to welcome to the podium the Chancellor of Penn State Hazleton, Dr. Gary M. Lawler. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the 52nd annual commencement of the Hazleton campus of the Pennsylvania State University. We are pr proud to present these fine graduates this evening and to seg to celebrate this significant milestone in their academic career. K 
Campus visitors will often comment how beautiful our campus is. The grounds are well-maintained, the view is breathtaking, and the buildings are impressive. Yet, the real beauty of our campus has to do with the people who come to work and those that study with us. I am always proud of our fabulous student body. They are highly engaged, respectful, diverse, and curious. In addition, our faculty and staff are here for the right reasons, to bring a quality Penn State education to our students and help them along their pathway to success. This has been an exciting year at Penn State Hazleton. We are poised for significant growth. We now have 13 baccalaureate degrees on campus and our 14th in biology will begin in the fall of 2023. We awarded over $1 million to our students in the form of scholarships. As we are finishing a new capital campaign entitled A Greater Penn State for 21st Century Excellence, we are getting very close to $7 million, a million over our goal, and we are excited about the new scholarships that this will provide. We are also proud of our new collaboration with Amazon and their Career Choice Program. Through this partnership, employees who have worked for Amazon for 90 days will be able to gain access to higher education yearly and be supported by up to $5,250 per year. We are so proud to be a part of this program, which has the potential to add greatly to our part-time adult population. This year marks the 88th anniversary of bringing quality higher education to the Hazleton region. We continue to strive to deliver the land-grant mission of teaching, research, and community service. This was the vision of our Hazleton founders back in 1934. I ask all of you to help us in achieving our goals by sharing in the effort and the success as we move Penn State Hazleton forward as a model of student-centered, high-quality education. I hope that you enjoy this evening and moment of celebration. Your willingness to support our vision and our students helps to create a legacy that will take us far into the future. Thank you for joining us this evening, and please continue to be an important part of our campus. We are Penn State. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce Penn State Hazleton's terrific student government president, Alessandro Banta. Ali? Hello. So my name is Ali Banta, um, outgoing student government president, like Dr. Lawler said. Thank you. And honestly, I did not know how to write this speech. I've literally been dreaming of giving a speech at my own graduation since freshman year or first year. So I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted to have some dramatic, life-changing story to tell. I stressed about it for literally weeks. I procrastinated. But then when I finally got to typing it, I was retyping it, deleting it, the whole mess. Um, so thank you to everyone who edited, commented on, and helped me revise my speech. But this is a completely new and revised one. Because I realized that my speech did not have to be perfect because nothing about my co college career was perfect or flawless. It was messy, it was unorganized, and it was frustrating at times, which I'm sure we can all relate to. And nothing about me is perfect. I'm messy, I'm unorganized, and I'm frustrating at times. And that's okay, because messy, unorganized, and frustrating adds character, as my mom would say. And that phrase has been drilled into my head for as long as I can remember. Same as another phrase that Miss Tammy Spivak quoted by Randy Posh to my first year class, experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. I feel like my entire college career has just been filled with character development and experience, good and bad, messy and unorganized. But here I am, here we are. And honestly, I think that's pretty cool because you know how hard college can be? You get sent to a campus that you know no one, you know no one there, you know nothing, and you have to learn everything. Luckily, this campus is small enough that I never had to worry about finding the right building or classroom, so that was nice. 
But seriously, to the graduates sitting in these seats today, you better be proud of yourself. Don't you, uh, don't you dare let anyone else diminish your accomplishment of graduating college. Honestly, graduating high school is hard enough. This campus has been my home for four years, which feels really weird to say because I still feel 18, but apparently I'm 22 and graduating. So while I'm lucky to have made it to graduation day, I'm also lucky to have spent my time here at Penn State Hazleton. The memories I've made on this campus are irreplaceable. I have met the most incredible peers, and being in student government as well as an RA, I've had the honor of working for and with the most amazing people at this place, just to name a few. Patrice Lombard, Ryan Ayton, Megan Bobish, Rob Knight, David Laird, Miss Chrissy, Chris K, sorry Chris, I have no idea how to pronounce your name, so I had to abbreviate it. Tracy Garnick, Bonnie Sukina, Tammy Speedback, Katie, Kate, Miss Katie from Career Centers, the amazing coffee shop ladies, Miss Tracy and Miss Becca, Miss Denise from the CAF that makes fun of me every time I get a fountain soda and don't use a lid on my cup to save plastic, Miss Lisa and Mr. Chris. Those are maybe half of the people on this campus that have changed my life, and probably for a lot of the graduating class here. So I could, of course, continue to list names, but we would be here late into the night and the next morning, and I know that we're all looking forward to post-graduation margaritas and half-priced abs at Applebee's, so just know <laughs> that this campus has exponential staff and faculty that deserve all the recognition and love. They truly mean the world to me. Hazleton has not only given me my lifelong friends, like my roommate, Hannah Eberwine, who had to put up with my messy and unorganized living habits, and my 36% stat exam freak out. I'm sure if you guys were in stat, you know how hard that is. But it's also given me such great experience with leadership, community building, and networking. Being a part of student government, becoming an RA, and representing Hazleton in the Hazleton Conference and our athletic council are all things that I might not have gotten to experience at a bigger campus. Because at this campus, we're not just a number. We're students. I'm not just student number 146. I'm Ali Banta. My professors know me. My faculty, staff and faculty know me. But they don't just know me. They know every single student sitting in these chairs today. Ask anyone in this room and they'll agree that the power of Hazleton is having that unique opportunity to foster close relationships with the st staff and faculty on this campus. Allowing students to network, make changes on campus, and create their own personalized college experience. We are small but very mighty. Again, we could go far into the night about my love for this campus and the people, but unfortunately everything good must come to an end. So graduates, don't forget Hazleton. Don't forget the professors you cried to in tutoring. Don't forget the $5 Broadway trips every week. Don't forget the mac and cheese or quesadilla days in the calf. And especially, don't forget the dog food smell that comes from the factory some days. <laughs> um, you can forget that, but <laughs> don't forget the experiences. Good or bad, messy and unorganized, or put together and perfect because this is truly a unique place that I wish everyone got the chance to experience. I'm so incredibly proud of the class of 2022 and the other classes that have come before me and will come after me. Hazleton produces successful, important, talented people, and you, graduate, are one of them. Remember to be thankful for your time here. Remember not to forget this campus. And remember to pay back your student loans because that six-month grace period is going to sneak up on you. And I, as I was writing the speech, I felt like I should probably stop making jokes, but I didn't feel like I had to because Hazleton accepts me as me, and they accept each and every one of their students here today. But all jokes aside, I'm so thankful for this campus, its people, the memories, and experiences. And again, I'm so proud of those that have had the grit to make it here to graduation today. It's not easy, but you're going to do amazing things. Just by existing, you're already doing amazing things. It has been an honor to serve this campus as student government president, an RA, and women's volleyball captain. And while I'm sad to see it come to an end, I can't wait for the future. So congratulations, oh, my earring just fell out. <laughs> see, messy and unorganized, it's okay. Congratulations, Penn State Hazleton's class of 2022.
Thank you. The Penn State Hazelton Council is a group of distinguished community leaders and donors that are an advisory group to the campus and through their guidance and philanthropy, help to move Penn State Hazelton forward. Tonight, we are fortunate to have the president of the Penn State Hazelton Council present to offer greetings. It is my pleasure to welcome to the podium, Dr. Sharon E. Rohrbach. Wow, what a act, hard act to follow. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> well, good evening. I am pleased to be here this evening to represent the Penn State Hazelton Council, to extend their best wishes, and to share in this wonderful celebration. Now, approximately 85 years ago, a group of community members made the journey to State College, and they requested that Penn State establish a center in Hazleton. The trip to State College ended in starting the campus that was called Penn State High Acres, better known today as the Penn State Hazleton Campus. It is also the model of a community and campus partnership that signifies the role of the Penn State Hazelton Council. The council acts as an advisory board to the chancellor and the campus. It consists of members from a large cross section of the greater Hazelton area, including campus alumni. As a proud Penn State graduate, I am honored to be part of this organization. And Ellie, there were far more, far letter, far least buildings when I went to college, so it has grown. Though it works, the council helps provide guidance and direction to the administration with the focus on a vision for the future. Tonight, you, our 2022 graduates at the associates and bachelor's level, are a vital part of that vision and future. Now that your hard work has paid off, we challenge you to continue that work, to stay engaged with your community, to visit the campus often, and stay in touch. You are now part of the family of Penn State and continue to be. I would also like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all who have supported you during your time at Penn State Hazelton, your families, the faculty, and the staff, and the administration. So on behalf of the Penn State Hazelton Council, congratulations, class of 2022. As you go forward into the next stage of your life, we are confident that you will continue to make us Penn State proud. Thank you. At this time, I would like to welcome to the podium Dr. Maggie Gordon Froelich, Associate Director of Academic Affairs and Associate Professor of English and Women's Gender and Sexuality Studies. Maggie? Thank you, Dr. Lawler. Good evening. Will the candidates for associate degrees please rise? Dr. Lawler, I have the honor to present these candidates and to report that in the judgment of the faculty, they have satisfactorily fulfilled all of the requirements for these degrees. May I present the candidates for the degrees of Associate in Science.
By virtue of the authority vested in me by the President and the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania State University, I hereby confer upon you an associate degree, and I welcome you to all the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. The candidates for the Associate in Science degree in Medical Laboratory Technology will be announced by Ms. Amy Yenser, Associate Teaching Professor of Biology. Rebecca Cindy Cannon. Marissa Ann McMullen. The candidates for the Associate in Science degree in Physical Therapist Assistant will be announced by Dr. Rosemarie Petrilla. Teaching Professor of Physical Therapy in the Physical Therapy Assistant Program. Rebecca Maria Baum. Willow L. Forney. Amanda Marie Grant. Congratulations. Janelle Grant. Madison Felty. Alexa Hillebold. Abigail Rose Jacobs. <laughs> Shane K. Miller. Erica Lee Peterson. <laughs> Elaine Shanette Marie Rosado. Jonathan Gerard Torres. <laughs> 
Tamara Elizabeth Wagner. Kyle Whipple. <laughs> Madeline Dincher, my apologies, Maddie. Sorry. Those graduating with associate degrees in absentia this evening are Alyssa L. Brown, Krista Carlin, Tammy Marie Christ, Madison Felty, Kevin Clock, Abigail Majeski, Heather Marie Schlenker. Please join me in congratulating all associate degree graduates. At this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium Dr. Elizabeth J. Wright, Associate Dean for Academic Affairs in the Office of the Vice President for Commonwealth Campuses and Director of Academic Affairs at Penn State Hazleton for the presentation of the baccalaureate candidates. Good evening. Dr. Lawler, I have the honor to present these candidates and to report that in the judgment of the faculty, they have satisfactorily fulfilled all of the requirements for these degrees. Would the candidates please rise? May I present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the President and the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania State University, I hereby confer upon you your bachelor's degree, and I welcome you to all of the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. The candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree in Administration of Justice will be announced by Dr. Pamela Black, Professor of Criminal Justice. Lady Victoria Honey. <laughs> Malia Kennedy. Candidate for the Bachelor of Arts degree in Corporate Communication will be announced by Dr. Joshua Parcha, Assistant Professor of Corporate Communication. Jacob T. Morgan. Candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminal Justice will be announced by Dr. Pamela Black, Professor of Criminal Justice. Benita Bruce.
Naomi Caridad Rodriguez. The candidate for the Bachelor of Arts degree in Letters, Arts, and Sciences will be announced by Mr. Chuck DeWald, Assistant Teaching Professor of English. Cassidy Lentz. The candidates for the Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology will be announced by Dr. Lisa Gogan, Associate Professor of Psychology. So Mary Abreu de la Cruz. Alessandra Banta. <laughs> Luxida Hernandez. Malia Kennedy. Sammy Lopez. Zorangel Sosa. Chelsea Marie Welch. The candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Engineering will be announced by Dr. Joseph Rinali, Associ Associate Professor of Engineering. M Mark Brady. Christopher James Diggin. Clayton Josiah Kimsel. Nathan Thomas Pawcelli. The candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Administration of Justice will be announced by Dr. Pamela Black, Professor of Criminal Justice.
Guy Taylor Esterly. Stephanie Rodriguez. <laughs> Nicholas Edward Zasada. Candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Business will be announced by Ms. Lori Reno, Assistant Teaching Professor in Business. Justin Anziani. Junior and Yudis Arias. <laughs> Carla Maria Cabrera Blanco. Nicholas John Bradley. <laughs> Becky V. Cruz. Cesarina Del Rosario Caraballo. Molly Elizabeth Isom. Christopher James Kraut. Andrew Kwiatkowski. Lizbeth Luna Araruhu. Jeanette Martinez Landida. Sarah A. Miglis. Ariana Rose Paul Hamus.
Nathan Shiner. Colin Stoffer. Jacob Michael Tashler. Kayla Jolene Wildrick. The candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice will be announced by Dr. Pamela Black, Professor of Criminal Justice. Zachary Joseph Johnson. <laughs> Aubrey Madeline Smith. Joan Vasquez. The candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Health Policy and Administration will be announced by Ms. Beth Greenberg, Lecturer of Health Policy Administration. Daniel Jen Domenico. <laughs> Michael Griskovich. Nikki Irene O'Neill. The candidates for the Bachelor of Science in Information Sciences and Technology will be announced by Ms. Barbara Brazen, Associate Teaching Professor of Information Sciences and Technology. Noah J. Ancharsky. <laughs> Andy. Familia. <laughs> Tyler Joseph Hall. Kyle Robert Harrow.
Cassidy Aneda Lugo. Zachary Perkowski. The candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Project and Supply Chain Management will be announced by Ms. Lori Reno, Assistant Teaching Professor in Business. Nicholas John Bradley. Back again. Cesarina Del Rosario Caraballo. Christopher James Kraut. Andrew Kwiatkowski. Ariana Rose Paul Hamus. The candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Psychology will be announced by Dr. Lisa Gogan, Associate Professor of Psychology. Jacob Buckley. <laughs> Nicole Marie Fisher. Michaela Nyaus. The candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree in Rehabilitation and Human Services will be announced by Dr. Garrett Huck, Associate Professor of Rehabilitation and Human Services. Esmeralda Castro. <laughs> Michelle Dean. Sierra Grady. <laughs> Brian Kunkel.
Kaylee J. Mauser. Jasmini Mabel Murillo. <laughs> Nicole Peranich. Ashley Marie Slattery. <laughs> Cheyenne Stone Road. Nicholas Vital. Those graduating with baccalaureate degrees in absentia this evening are Nicholas Ahn, Caitlin Ashelman, Kayla Marie DiSabella, Haley. A. Fallon, Lily Fitt, Daniel Jean Frisk, Kevin Gustav, Nicholas Marhuchek, Yudis Gomez Medina, Dustin Rensler, Taylor Rudin, Vielka E. Saldana, Nicole Salamo, Salerno, Nicholas Strubinger, Melanie Evanadi Tejada, and Diona Zamudio. Will you please join me in congratulating all of our 21-22 graduates.
So typically, we would move at this point to recognizing our current graduates from 21-22 who have earned academic distinction. We're going to do that in a moment. But before we do so, we'd like to make a brief detour and recognize a very, very special group of graduates. 21-22 graduates, as you know, the onset of the pandemic in March 2020 moved Penn State to an unprecedented moment, one in which we were all fully virtual. One consequence of this was that Penn State was forced to move to a fully virtual commencement. We virtually recognized our 2019 20 gradu 2020 graduates in May 2020. However, we've always longed to give these graduates an opportunity to celebrate with us in person. So 21-22 graduates, we say thank you for sharing a little bit of your night with the following individuals. And so tonight I'm so very pleased to share that we've invited our 2019-2020 graduates to this ceremony and that we've come to the point in the program where we will recognize their accomplishments. Dr. Froelich, will you please come to the podium to recognize our 2019-2020 graduates who are in attendance this evening. We recognize those who graduated with an Associate of Science degree in Medical Laboratory Technician, Hannah Kate Eberlein, Megan Taylor. We recognize those who graduated with an Associate in Science degree in Physical Therapist Assistant, Esmeralda Castro. Nicole Paranich. We recognize those who graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology, Ulyssa Arias. <laughs> we recognize those who graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Engineering. James P. Dotzel. We recognize those who graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in business, Karina Madera. Carolina Madera. Congratulations. Cordell Muthler. Hey, 
Miguel Alexander Polanco. We recognize those who graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Information Sciences and Technology. Jerrica Chorba. <laughs> Chris Mary Paredes. Madison Palumbo. We recognize those who graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Project and Supply Chain Management. Christopher William Jones. Jared T. Kalbush. We recognize those who graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree in Rehabilitation and Human Services. Francis Tapia. Please join me in congratulating all 2019-20 associate and bachelor degree candidates. All right, and now I would like to recognize students who have earned highest honors. Graduation with distinction is an honor bestowed on graduates by the university based on their cumulative grade point average. Penn State bestows this special recognition on the top 12% in each college. The 12% is divided as follows. The top 2% are summa cum laude, the next 4% are magna cum laude, and the final 6% are cum laude. Students who are graduating summa cum laude this evening are wearing a blue and white cord, those graduating magna cum laude are wearing a blue cord, and the students graduating cum laude are wearing a white cord. Will those students graduating summa cum laude this evening please rise and remain standing as I announce your name. Clayton Kimsel. And Nicole Peranich. Will those students graduating magna cum laude please rise and remain standing as I announce your names. Cesarina Del Rosario Caraballo. Nicole Fisher. Malia Kennedy. And Cassidy Aneda Lugo. And now will those graduating cum laude please rise and remain standing as I announce your names. Mark Brady. Tyler Hall. Christopher James Kraut. Sarah A. Miglis. 
Nikki, Irene, O'Neill, Zorangel Sosa, Nicholas Vital, and Nicholas Edward Zasada. And we've got one graduating cum laude in absentia, Alyssa L. Brown. Congratulations to all these graduates. Please congratulate them. And now at this point, we'd like to recognize the following graduates for their military service. They are wearing honor courts tonight of red, white, and blue. Please thank them for their service, and we ask that they as well stand and be recognized. Christopher James Kraut. And Ariana Rose Palhamas. I know I speak for all of us when we thank you both for your service. <laughs> and now it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Dan Patel, Associate Professor of Chemistry, who will be announcing tonight's Costas Awards. It is my pleasure to announce this year's winners of the Frank C. Costas Award. This award honors the late Frank C. Costas, who ended a 27-year affiliation with Penn State Hazleton when he retired as campus director in 1973. It was established by the, by the Hazleton Educational Council, the Campus Advisory Board. The award is made annually to three students as follows. To the full-time student with the highest grade point average in Penn State coursework and enrolled in a baccalaureate degree program at the end of the sophomore year. To the full-time Penn State Hazleton baccalaureate degree student with the highest grade point average in Penn State coursework who intends to graduate. And finally, to the full-time Penn State Hazleton uh, associate degree student with the highest grade point average in Penn State coursework who intends to graduate. The Costos Award consists of a cash award and a replica of the Nittany Lion. The Penn State Baccalaureate degree recipient is Kayla Witcher, Digital Media Arts Technology. Kayla is pursuing a degree at Penn State Berend. Penn State Hazleton Baccalaureate degree recipient is Clayton J. Kimsel, who is graduating with a degree in engineering. And the Penn State Hazleton associate degree recipient is Alyssa L. Brown. Alyssa could not be here with us this evening. She is graduating with a degree in medical laboratory technology. Congratulations to our Costos winners. After 15 years of impactful leadership at Penn State Hazleton, and more than 40 years in higher education, Chancellor Gary M. Lawler will begin a well-deserved retirement on June 30th. Chancellor Lawler's proud career has spanned decades. To put his time into perspective, he spent 23 years as a math instructor where he earned the rank of full professor. Before securing his leadership role, as Vice President of Academic Affairs at Adirondack Community College in New York. Dr. Lawler would continue to serve various leadership positions at institutions in New York and Vermont before arriving here in 2017.
From day one, Chancellor Lawler strived to ensure a robust, meaningful, and rewarding student experience by championing measures like program expansion, facility upgrades, and efforts to enrich their lives in and out of the classroom. He was an ardent advocate for sustainability, increased diversity, collaboration, and access to education. Support for student programs, scholarships, awards, endowments, and special funds have doubled during his tenure. Among Chancellor Lawler's accomplishments was the increase of four-year baccalaureate degrees, which expanded from five to 13 programs under his tenure. His establishment of practical nursing program as the anchor program for the campus's continuing education office has led to the graduations of hundreds of students and the development of additional health care programs. To help students transition seamlessly to Penn State Hazleton, he oversaw the efforts to expand articulation agreements with area community colleges and the Video Lankar School of Information Technology in India. Other impacts can be seen right here on campus. Chancellor Lawler helped spearhead the investments of millions of dollars into improving the Slusser Basic Building, the Casca's Building, and the Mary M. Bertel E. Lofstrom Library. He also led the beautification efforts for Dr. Lil Junis Garden and the Barbara J. and Ronald L. Belasco Bella Vista and Campus Roadways. With the help and partnership, he forged in the greater Hazleton community that Chancellor Lawler contributed to the development of the Hazleton Launch Box. Supported by Pasco L. Shibo Esquire, since opening in the heart of Hazleton in 2019, the Launch Box has supported dozens of businesses and assisted hundreds of entrepreneurs. Throughout his tenure, Dr. Lawler has been an active member of various committees on campus within the university and the greater Hazleton community. Thanks to his vision, leadership, and dedication to the students' success, Chancellor Lawler's impact will be felt for many years into the future. Please join me in welcoming Chancellor Gary M. Lawler to the podium and wishing him a happy, healthy, and fulfilling retirement. Thank you, thank you. It's hard to hear about 40, 44 years of your life. Congratulations once again to the graduates of, the, of 2020 and tonight's 2022 graduates of the Hazleton campus of the Pennsylvania State University. It is my honor and privilege to address our graduates tonight. It is my honor, as this is my final public event, I will lead as a chancellor of the Hazleton campus as I prepare to retire in June. As a privileged graduates, I must begin by telling you how much I admire your resiliency and your commitment to higher education that you have shown during your time at our campus during the pandemic. It certainly wasn't a walk in the park, but you showed your citizenship as part of our campus community by doing your very best and even the most difficult of times. There were times when you may have been remote and struggled a bit to learn a new environment dependent on technology. It was not enough to simply get up in the morning, get yourself ready and head to class. Now there was Zoom and you had to connect and mentally prepare yourself for a different experience. Faculty and staff pivoted to help you in the very finest ways, but ultimately the rest was really up to you. Then there was the return to campus in a hybrid environment and ultimately a return to the new normal of in-person classroom experiences. The challenges just kept coming and you responded to each and every one of them. It was heartwarming to learn about how happy you were to return to in-person classes. We, the faculty and staff, were certainly happy but we did not anticipate how much you wanted to return and the extent of your joy in doing so. 
Then, of course, there was the testing and the masking. At every step and turn, you did your best to comply with what we asked you to do. You did it for the safety of the Penn State community that you were a part of, along with concerns for your family, friends, and the larger community to which we all belong. You did it not because you were asked to, but because deep down you knew it was the right thing to do. And that is what we do at Penn State. Tonight is a very important day that you will reflect on in a, time and again for the rest of your life. It is a milestone moment not only for you, but also your proud family members. It marks the beginning of the journey, which will be the rest of your life. That is certainly kind of a big deal, isn't it? It is built on the foundation of all your experiences up until tonight. Foundations are important. At the very base of your foundation have been all the lessons, mentoring, and guidance given to you by your family. Your family will always be constant in your life, but it will evolve with the changes that life gives us. Even in the difficult times, Remember that you have shown and polished your resilience. You graduated from college during a pandemic, which is quite an accomplishment indeed. Then there was your earlier elementary and secondary schooling in which family, friends, and teachers helped assist you. While you were here at Penn State, you have made new friends and be, been educated by an outstanding faculty and a dedicated staff to build your foundation even higher. Yet. It is still a foundation for the next level of your life. It is like building a pyramid. Each new level depends on the strength and support of the last. But what is it that you're going to do to build the next level of your foundation? Perhaps more education, either formally like graduate school or informally as a lifelong learner. You may not see yourself as a lifelong learner, but I suspect most, if not many of you, will find that later in life, you have been one. I recently reflected on the depth to which I am a lifetime learner. I always knew that I, that I was always learning and refining new skills, but the constancy and the depth of it had not struck me until recently when I realized I have gone back to school every fall since the September of 1959 when I began kindergarten and I climbed up those big steps to get on that bright yellow school bus. If you make the move to continue your education now with graduate school, you will already have some of the skills you will need and others will need to be deepened. There are so many directions you can go here, whether you build on your undergraduate degree or branch off into a new field. I can give you an example in my own family. My daughter, Crystal, graduated several years ago with an undergraduate degree in sign language interpretation, something she very much loves. She began interpreting through agencies as a consultant and soon was making a good living. Well, along came that nasty pandemic. Now she had no work because schools, colleges, and universities were all going remote and there was no sign, la no sign language interpretation jobs or very few of them. Like you, Crystal was resilient and got a job with the New York State Department of Health. Before long, she found her new passion, helping to educate the public on infectious diseases. She will graduate next weekend with a master's degree in epidemiology from the University of Albany. So you never know where a next path may take you or how the world stage will play a part in it. One piece of advice about graduate school Try to get an assistantship so that your tuition is paid for and you're given a living stipend. They're competitive, but definitely worth it. If you move into the workforce, what is your passion? What is it that you wish to accomplish? While money may be a motivator, it certainly isn't all about the money. Money is a complicated subject. It is useful to have, painful when you do, do not, and can lead you away from your passion and make you complacent if you're not careful. 44 years ago, I was guided to a career in higher education. I say guided because I was really unsure of what I was going to do. I had double majored in math and theater as an undergraduate and went on to graduate school in mathematics because of a faculty member 
who helped me obtain several offers for an assistantship. I chose the University of Albany and two years later had my master's in mathematics. There I was, 23 years old, with a master's degree, and I thought I wanted to teach at the college level, but it had not crossed my mind to apply for any jobs. I knew I had a passion for teaching college. My passion had come from extraordinary experiences with undergraduate professors who had excited me about learning several subjects, especially math, theater, dance, and English. Yes, I included dance. I have been known to tap dance down the hall of Old Main with their great stone floors on the way to a meeting. Just ask Dr. Wright, who breaks up laughing and must compose herself as we enter an important meeting. Okay, back to those professors who had invested their passion in me. I knew they had helped me find a pathway somewhere, but did not know where. The best idea I had, and don't try this one, this is like a million to one shot, was to write an unsolicited letter to the school I attended, told them I wanted to teach, and then waited for the mail to come each day. Well, the mailbox was empty, but being an optimist, I thought I should go to the mall and buy a pair of shoes that I would need for an interview. While in the mall, as destiny would have it, I ran into one of my math mentor professors who asked me if I would like to teach a summer course with them. And that is how my 44-year experience began. Two weeks later, they had a one-year full-time opening. I interviewed with those new shoes, and I got the job for $9,000. Soon I was on campus, still 23 years old, looking like 16, teaching full-time. Why was I passionate about this job? As for most people in higher education, I wanted to make a difference. I have carried that goal of making a difference throughout my career, throughout all the positions I held, earning a doctorate along the way, and moving from teaching to administration. Along this journey, I've learned a thing or two, a thing or two about a thing or two. And it's my pleasure and duty to pass them along during a graduation speech as, such as this to you graduates tonight. If you decide to pursue the world of work following tonight, I have some words of wisdom that I thought I would share. First, go to the mall and buy a comfortable pair of shoes. Especially if you're on your feet a lot, you will need them, and you'll never know who you'll run into at the mall. Second, if you see some red flags during the interview and you're not sure this, if this will be a good fit, run fast the other way. Situations which could go one way or another usually head in the wrong direction. Find out whether your place of employment does what your place of employment does regarding diversity, equity, and inclusion. Do they value knowledge regarding cross-cultural competencies, unconscious bias, etc.? If they do not, you may be someday in the middle of a difficult situation that makes you uncomfortable with no support. Again, run fast. Once you get the job, always try to be on time, preferably arriving before your boss does and leaving work after she goes home. It will pay off. This is an important one. Never bring your boss a problem without having a possible solution. No one likes people just dumping things on their desk to get it off theirs. In the long run, it will pay off as well. And lastly, always show respect to everyone, even when it's difficult. Engage in getting to know people as it will provide richness to the experience. Well, those are my six words of wisdom for you tonight. They have served me well, and I hope they will serve you as well. Before I conclude, every graduation speech must have a quote or two. I have used this first one many times, because it's the one, of my, one of my favorites. Teddy Roosevelt once said, in any moment of decision, the best thing to do is the right thing, the next best thing to do is the wrong thing, and the worst thing to do is nothing. So go forward into the world to make a difference. Pay it forward, help those in need, be respectful to all, and mentor, that, 
mentor those that you can. You are a Penn State grad. The university has been in existence 167 years, and what Sir Isaac Newton once wrote comes to mind. If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Thank you for listening. Go forth, be happy and healthy, and take all my best wishes for your future success. Always remember, we are Penn State. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lawler, for your words. Hang on a sec. We got a little something. For your words of encouragement and wisdom this evening. We're grateful to hear that Teddy Roosevelt quote one more time. <laughs> and I like the tap dap dancing stories. That is very true. He was very good at making me laugh just when we were going into the most important meetings in Old Maine. And I would walk in laughing, and he would be absolutely stone cold, sober faced. So I think I speak for all of us when I say that we are very grateful for your 15 years of service to Penn State and to this campus in particular. So at Penn State, it's very customary that when one retires from the university, we give a lion as a token of appreciation for that individual's year of service to the institution. So Dr. Lawler, if you'll indulge us, we'd like to ask you to come up to the podium for just a moment. Dr. Lawler, your lion reads as follows. To Dr. Gary M. Lawler, with highest appreciation for his 15 years of dedication to Penn State Hazleton students, faculty, and staff. As Professor Braden Brazen shared in her introduction, you've left a lasting legacy upon the campus, its students, its faculty, and its staff. We wish you congratulations on your retirement. We offer all good wishes as you embark on your new adventure. We remind you to wear sunscreen. And most of all, <laughs> we thank you for your sustained commitment to the campus and to its students. Thank you. Thank you very much. On July 28, 1870, nine years after the first students graduated, the Penn State Alumni Association began with 12 Penn Staters in a chemistry room on the first floor, there's that floor again, of Old Main. The Penn State Alumni Association, a powerful network of more than 175,000 members, is the largest dues-paying alumni association in the country. Representing the Penn State Alumni Association this evening, we are very pleased to have with us Sandra P. Laguna. She's here to offer some words to our graduates. Sandy. The Penn State Alumni Association celebrates your successes and welcomes you in, into a proud network of Penn Staters. More than 174 alumni and friends like you keep this connection to our world-class university strong through membership in the Penn State Alumni Association. With your graduation, the Alumni Association is pleased to present you with a free membership for your first year. Your membership keeps you in touch with Penn State and connects you with more than 300 geographically dispersed alumni chapters, interest groups, and college and campus alumni societies. I invite you, once you're settled, to reach out to your local Penn State alumni chapter. Your Penn State family will be happy to hear from you. And in the upcoming years, when you return to University Park, we invite you to visit us at the 
the Hintz Family Alumni Association. With that, we'd like to ask our new graduates to please rise. Will all other Penn State alumni here today please rise? It gives me great pleasure to induct all of graduating students of the Pennsylvania University into the Penn State Alumni Association. Welcome to the Penn State alumni family. Congratulations. Would you all rise and please join us in singing the Penn State alma mater. The words are printed on the inside front cover of your program. Before I close with my closing remarks, um, I wanted to go off script for a moment and talk about what happens when a chancellor retires. Well, they start a nationwide search with a very good search firm, and they search the entire nation looking for the very best candidate that they might find in order to come to Penn State Hazleton and uphold the values and the educational experience of Penn State. Well, we did that very thing. And this morning, it was publicly announced that Dr. Elizabeth J. Wright was the person, the best person in the nation to be our next chancellor. Chancellor-elect Elizabeth J. Wright. And since this is the last official public event, one of the things that, one of the perks of being a chancellor is that you get to confer degrees. But you only get to confer degrees when you're wearing the bronze medallion from Penn State. So it is my pleasure, it is my extreme pleasure to present this to Dr. Elizabeth J. Wright. Okay, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate once more each of our graduating students and offer my best wishes for your future success. You have worked hard and been resilient in the face of adversity, 
You all make us Penn State proud. We envy you for your youth, your enthusiasm, your ethical approaches, and your quest for making a difference in the world. As you leave this ceremony on campus tonight, please remember that you are now part of the legacy of the Hazleton campus of the Pennsylvania State University. You are always welcome here, and we hope that you visit us often. While we especially recognize our graduates this evening and celebrate their accomplishments, we also recognize that they could not have accomplished all that they have without additional support. We would like to recognize and thank all those that have supported our graduates tonight. Would all the members of the Penn State Hazleton Council, our alumni, and the members of the faculty and staff please rise, be recognized, and remain standing. Would all of the spouses and significant others of the graduates please rise, be recognized, and remain standing? Would all of the parents and the children of the graduates please rise, be recognized, and remain standing? Would all of the grandparents of the graduates please rise, be recognized, and remain standing? Would all of the relatives and friends of the graduates please rise, be recognized, and remain standing? Would all the graduates rise, be recognized, and remain standing? <coughs> Thank you very much for attending and helping us celebrate our 52nd annual commencement at Penn State Hazleton. Following the recessional, please join us for a reception to honor our graduates that will take place in the Graham lobby just a few steps down the wall walkway. The reception is co-sponsored by the Greater Hazleton Chapter of the Penn State Alumni Association and the Penn State Hazleton Alumni Society. Thank you again for joining us. Have a good evening. That's a wrap. Let's go.